So Davies was wrong after all? Well, I never did believe him. And only a few yards from where he thought the tomb was? That's right. Well, you deserve it, Monsieur Carter. I shall come and inspect the tomb tomorrow. This is a most excellent day for our department and for the country. I shall arrange storage facilities at the Cairo Museum. No. It's far too early to involve the museum. Whatever we do, nothing must be rushed. These things are precious. I understand. All care will be taken. I'm putting together a team of experts. I've already contacted the Metropolitan Museum as well as our own British specialists. This is a huge task. Please do not forget there are national interests to be considered. That may be so, but this must be preserved for all posterity. That is far more important than the concerns of any single nation. And as his lordship's field director, I intend to ensure that the correct procedures are followed at all times. I hope that's clear. This is an Egyptian tomb, Monsieur Carter. I may remind you, please don't touch the walls or any of the objects inside the tomb. Oh, extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. I do congratulate you. Thank you. So, this is what, do you suppose? It would appear to be the first of one or more antechambers. As you can see, there's another small chamber through a hole near the floor here. Oh, yeah. And at the far end, the entrance to the remainder of the tomb. But you have not looked through? Of course not. Are you sure this is indeed a tomb and not just a cache? This is remarkable, but... For a royal tomb, it does seem quite small. I'm not sure of anything yet. Hmm. Please don't touch. At least, not until it's been photographed. I'm sorry. I am glad to see that the instincts of the scholar have not been overtaken by those of the treasure hunter. I was never a treasure hunter, Mr. Lecoeur. Very well, you may proceed. I shall leave my inspector, Monsieur Ibrahim Mohamed, to attend on my behalf. You be so kind as to give your reports to him. And please, let me know when you are ready to break through. Of course. I would also be most grateful if you would arrange for a steel gate with a lock to be placed at the entrance of the tomb. We do not want any tomb robbing, do we? <laughs> Tutankhamun's tomb was to bring to the world the story of a dark age in the history of ancient Egypt. After a time of revolution, a boy king had come to the throne. In Tutankhamun's name, Egyptians were promised a new beginning. Old monuments were rebuilt, traditional religion restored, and the new king was given a queen, his sister, Anke Sanamun. In keeping with tradition, a site in the Valley of the Kings was selected for the pharaoh's burial an event that was to come sooner than the young king could have imagined. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First of all, thank you all for coming. Now, as you can see, 
What we know about the tomb so far is limited. We have no idea what lies behind this wall, and before we make an opening, I propose that each item in this chamber be individually numbered and annotated. Harry Burton will then take a photograph in situ. Sorry to drag you away from Italy, Harry. A brief description will then be made either by myself or by Arthur Mace, who has kindly agreed to join us from the Met. I wouldn't miss this one for anything. Then, and only then, will removal begin. This is where we need to be particularly careful, gentlemen, and that is why I have called upon Peggy Callender's engineering skills to help us with the dismantling of the larger objects. Once outside, everything will be brought here. I would ask you all to pay particular attention to any papyrus rolls that we might find. Now, I understand that they may not be as glamorous as many of the other objects, but their writings will tell us far more about who these people actually were. Alan Gardner will be in charge of that material. Any idea how long you think all this will take? The rest of our lives, I should imagine. Why? The reason, just... The task before us is prodigious, gentlemen. There is no precedent for how we should proceed, but... the world and future generations will not easily forgive us for our mistakes. Right you are, off you go. That one, go that one. I'm back. Raha, Ibrahim, Allah is a Bahena, Ibadana Tali. It's crowded enough in years and eights. Bloody man. Sooner or later, he's going to make something drop something. as if this was some sort of bloody fairground attraction. Have you any idea how many people were here yesterday? 12,000. 12,000? I mean, where in God's name are they all coming from? It's making work quite impossible, and it's only a matter of time before there's an accident. I think it's something we have to put up with, old man. The amount of interest this thing has generated is quite extraordinary. I've been giving interviews all morning. We're front page news, Howard. Hmm. Well, no one's spoken to me. If they had, I'd have told them to bugger off. <laughs> Did I tell you His Majesty's asked me to bark house for lunch? Tell him all about it. What's this, do you suppose? It's a shabty figure. There should be a number on it. Ask Mace to look it up. Pretty, isn't it? <sighs> Stop worrying, Howard. There's hundreds of them. And don't forget who's paying for all this. That's right, yes. I'm suggesting exclusive rights to it all. I'm sorry, can you speak up? No, I'm not going to sell them individually. One moment. We do want the world, don't we? Of course we do. And don't forget America. Yes, the world. And America as well. Yes, good. What? Oh, yes, splendid. That would be grand. Goodbye. I should take the pressure off Carter. Did they say yes? And at a very good price. Oh, Pops, you are clever. Howard will be so pleased. Let's have a drink. It is outrageous they are behaving as if they own this country. How dare they give exclusive rights to the Times? What about the Egyptian press? What about the rest of the world? They are colonialist. I don't care if they have an agreement. These things are for Egypt, not for the amusement of a British aristocrat. Yes, monsieur, I understand. Very well, as you wish.
They say we must wait. Go back to the dome and watch them. If they break the terms of the concession in any way whatsoever, call me immediately. The slightest infringement, and we shall take control of the tomb. You understand? We've counted over 600 objects in this room alone. Everything has to be wrapped and protected. So far, we've used over half a mile of cotton wadding and 16 bales of calico. And we're only halfway through. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Howard. This is Harry Burton. If you need any photographs, speak to him. I won't allow any other photographers in here. Oh, my God. It's extraordinary. Carter, look at this. Oh, my God. Evelyn, come and see this. Oh, that's beautiful. Aren't they lovely? This must be his wife. She's anointing him with oil. Now, mind your heads on the way in. It's rather low. Morning, Carter. How's it all going? We're very busy now. If you could just keep clear, I'll be with you when I can. Right. Yes. Paul, well, show me. Come back later. Yes, it is beautiful, isn't it? As soon as Tutankhamun was old enough, his queen was expected to produce a child. The future of Egypt depended on it. Without an heir, the empire could be flung into chaos on the death of the king. Incestuous marriage between royals might have made political sense, but producing a healthy child from a union between sister and brother was fraught with risk. Tutankhamun's queen, Ankesanamun, miscarried at least twice. But even dead babies were considered precious. They were of royal blood. Each was mummified for eventual burial with their father. You make space for my Move out of the way there, make space. Move out of the way. Yes, you. Get out. This is private property. Get off it now. Move! Who let him in? Do you have any idea who that is? That's Beigel from the Daily Mail. All he's responsible for is stirring up trouble and writing malicious gossip like that bloody curse story. Communication with the press is only allowed with the times. I will not tolerate any exceptions. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Where are you going? Home, Howard. I am not a schoolboy. Are you looking forward to the opening? Everything's ready. I've emptied it all out, apart from the two guarding statues. I thought they should stay. Why not? You will cover up our little hole, won't you? I wouldn't want Bacco seeing that. I wish we could get rid of that bloody man. But we have to deal with him. We mustn't forget that. Try a little flattery. Always works with the froggies. You know you should never have signed that deal with the Times. It's only made matters worse. I thought it was what you wanted. I must say, it's been rather a good deal for me. 
Oh, did I tell you I was thinking of having a little cinema film made? No. No, I'm sorry, I can't allow that. Allow what, Harold? Nothing. Nothing. I was just leaving. Good night, sir. Good night, Evelyn. I mentioned the idea of a film. I told you you wouldn't like it. What Howard would or would not like is beginning to irritate me. First of all, the King congratulated me on our magnificent discovery. And then the Queen, whom I sensed was somewhat less excited, said, but can it be quite right breaking into a tomb and digging up a royal personage? <laughs> I say, Mace, I hope you're not falling victim to the curse of Tutankhamun. No, no, excuse me, I uh, think I've been breathing in too much mummy dust over the years. Yes, well, I dare say we're all a little nervous about what we shall find when we knock through the wall behind me. So, first, I'd like to ask our chief excavator and my field director, Mr. Howard Carter, to say a few words. Howard. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is a great moment in my life. Already, this tomb is the single biggest find in the history of archaeology in Egypt. And even if we find nothing more, it will enrich beyond measure our knowledge of what was once a forgotten but mighty culture. No one knows what lies behind this wall. It may be another antechamber. It may be empty. Or, if we're lucky, it may be a burial chamber with an intact royal tomb. If it is, I trust that we will respect the Pharaoh who has lain in peace here for over 3,000 years and that he will forgive our intrusion, made in the name of science the only possible justification and not, as some have suggested, in the name of profit. Whatever we find, I shall, of course, expect the same standards and procedures that I have employed in the clearance of this chamber to be maintained at all times. Let's open it up, shall we, Howard? You know there is a rumor that you and Carter have already broken in. Really? Mm. It would seem to be an intact tomb, with a sarcophagus and a body. It would seem so, yes. Then you are aware of the rules as a concession. If intact, the government is entitled to deny to the excavator any claim to the objects recovered. I intend to enforce this condition. That's outrageous. One moment, now. I understand the rules perfectly, Monsieur Lecoeur. But a court of law might well disagree with your interpretation. The rules are notoriously badly written, after all. Besides, although the tomb seems intact, we don't actually know that yet, do we? But I suggest we leave things as they are until Howard's had a chance to open up the sarcophagus and see what's inside. Then we can decide what's best. Don't you agree? 
Very well. Until the sarcophagus is open. Now steady. Take it easy if you're careful on the steps. Carter! What is it? Look at this. Poor man. The more we go on, the sorrier I feel for him, you know. It looks like there are four of these shrine covers before we get to the sarcophagus. We still can't really work out how they ever got them in. Getting them out without damage is proving to be the devil's own job. Excuse me, one moment. So, can we repair this here? Well, I'd like to see what Lucas thinks. What's this? Oh, um... We found those yesterday in the treasury. Mace thinks they're almost full term. The one on the left is a little girl. You can still make out some of the hair on the skull. I think they're the saddest things I've ever found. Like Verdi? Not particularly, sir. But I uh, find he's more effective than any guard dog. The locals like him even less. A lot of men would be nervous about sleeping overnight in a tomb. Well, the dead are dead. I don't bother them and they don't bother me. Going well, sir? To be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, sir. I thought I'd found it. <sighs> Up to now, all I really found are things. Wonderful things, sir? <laughs> yes. But nothing written. No papyrus. If I went to your house, walk through each room, how much would I actually learn about you just from looking at your possessions? Not much, I think. But if I read your diary, came across some household bills, found letters that have been written to you, then I think I'd begin to understand who you really were. I think my wife might have something to say about you uh, wandering about her house and rummaging around, sir. <laughs> yes, I expect she might. Well, I'll say good night. Good night, sir. Evening, Carter. Sorry, the door was unlocked. Let myself in. I thought you'd be here sooner. Help myself to drink, hope you don't mind. Of course not. What can I do for you? Why don't you pour yourself a drink first? What's the problem? 
I gather Horser and Hall have resigned and are leaving. Yes. <clears throat> I believe so. With Gardner, that makes a third of our team who have walked out. So? Gardner's a personal friend of mine. He's one of the finest brains in England. And came here at his own expense as a personal favour to me. Horser and Hall, as you well know, are here courtesy of the Metropolitan. I had a call this morning from New York. They want to know what's going on. Tell them that they chose to leave. They weren't working properly. That may be so. But these men gave our team international validity. I can withstand Laco if I can convince him. Laco is an incompetent meddler. Whose boss was previously imprisoned by the British. They will try anything to get rid of us. I will not have him in my tomb, and that's final. It's not your tomb, Howard. It's mine. The point is, you're the best excavator in the world. Without you, this tomb would never have been discovered. Your achievement is unique. But your public relations skills are somewhat lacking, if I may say so. Unless we're very careful, I shall lose this tomb. Are you questioning my leadership? Not at all. But I would ask you to be more careful, both with members of our team and with Monsieur Lacan. I will not grovel to that bloody Frenchman. Where did that come from? It comes from the treasury. May you ask me to have a look at it? Ask Evelyn. She was there. I don't think this has anything to do with my daughter. And frankly, I must tell you, I don't like your intimacy with her. <laughs> my intimacy? Your feelings for her are quite inappropriate. You're old enough to be her father, apart from anything else. What you mean is I'm not a gentleman. Don't put words in my mouth. But that's what you mean, isn't it? of Tutankhamun's reign, the real power was wielded from behind the throne by a military council run by the young king's advisor, I. But when Tutankhamun reached the age of 18, he would have claimed his inheritance, to rule Egypt as a divine pharaoh. The king's newfound power would not last long. In his tenth year on the throne, Tutankhamun died. Exactly why remains a mystery. Some believe he was murdered by his own advisers. Or perhaps he just had an accident. Examination of his body, using modern scientific techniques, showed a leg injury which could have been fatally infected. Tutankhamun was still a teenager.
good man. I can finish. No. It was my fault that we argued. For an Egyptian pharaoh, death was not the end, it was a beginning. Tutankhamun now embarked on his most important journey into the underworld. There he would be united with the gods and complete the cycle of resurrection and regeneration. But first, Tutankhamun's body must be preserved with salt. All of his internal organs, except the heart and kidneys, were removed. His brain was withdrawn through his nose and discarded, while other organs were preserved in an alabaster chest. Finally, Tutankhamun's mummified body was wrapped in bandages and placed within a series of golden coffins for transportation to the Valley of the Kings. Tutankhamun's young widow, Anki Sanamun, had produced no heir. So the former advisor, I, now came to the throne. To cement his power, he married Tutankhamun's widow. Probably another incestuous marriage. There is evidence that Anki Sanamun was I's own granddaughter. What saddens me the most is that you won't be at my wedding. Your wedding? I'm engaged to be married. We haven't announced it yet. Father said it was an awful come down for an earl's daughter to marry a mere baronet. He was joking, of course. He didn't care about things like that. Congratulations. Thank you. Lady Carnarvon. The carriages are ready. Goodbye. This is for you. It's the terms of the concession. My husband was very keen that you continue with your work. He agreed with the government that you remain in charge of the clearance of the tomb, no matter whether it remain intact or not. I won't let him down. No. Goodbye, Howard. Goodbye.
I think we're going to have to lift this frame up. I think we get the right uh, angle of leverage. Look, Ali, Ali, can you give me this one? Double. How's it going? Good. If you're looking at the damage, don't blame us. They must have just banged it into position. They don't seem to have taken much care. It took us 12 hours to get the last one out. We should be able to restore it. When are you going to be ready in there? Oh, I don't know. There's a crack across the lid. They filled it with gypsum. Now we're going to need angle eyes and differential pulleys to lift it. Tutankhamun had died, but his tomb was unfinished. Now a new site had to be found in a hurry. His body was probably placed in the tomb his chief advisor, I, had already built for himself. It was not designed for a king, but it could be made ready in time. Tutankhamun's coffin was placed inside a stone sarcophagus at the center of the burial chamber to be surrounded by four gold-covered shrines, one within the next, each covered in sacred writings to protect the king on his journey. The small tomb was crammed with everything Tutankhamun would need in the afterlife. There were beds, chairs, couches, musical instruments, magical charms, chariots, jewelry, swords, daggers, shields, torches, cosmetics, and boats to carry him on his long journey. Tutankhamun was not buried with the care one might expect for a king. The golden coffin was too big, and part of it had to be sawn off to make way for the lid of the sarcophagus. Tutankhamun's final resting place was in a tomb built for a commoner and assembled in a rush. Good. Good afternoon, Monsieur Carter. Monsieur Lecoe, you come for the opening of the sarcophagus? I have. My only regret is that Lord Carnarvon isn't here. Indeed. Though I would have had to remind him that all the usual rules still apply. I hope you understand that. <laughs> yes. Of course. Arthur, are you happy? Yes. Peggy, you happy? Very happy. All right, gentlemen, we left on three. Very, very gently. One. Two, three, and lift! Come on, man, we can do this! Lift! Pull, oh, gentlemen, pull! Oh. Come on, gentlemen, put your backs in there if we can do it! Pull! Lift it! Come on, gentlemen! Pull! Oh. That's it! That's it! Oh, look, look. She's coming! She's moving! Yeah. That's good! That's good! Yes! It's moving now, gentlemen! Slowly! Slowly! seem to be a coffin inside the tomb, Mr. Carter.
Are you looking forward to seeing what's inside? <laughs> yes and no. I wish people would stop interfering. They just... Well, they just get in the way, don't they? I don't know what you mean. Sometimes it's hard to keep in mind what we're all here for, isn't it? No. I know exactly why I'm here. I never forget it for a second. And why do you think that is, then? I want to find him, Arthur. I want to know who he was. I want to talk to him. Well, you may well find him. But at the end of it, all he will be is a mummy. He's not going to talk to you, is he? And if I can also ask you to be careful on the steps into the tomb, they are very steep. Abraham, Fie, this letter is for you, Mr. Carter. to make. Today, I was forbidden by letter from Monsieur Leco from escorting friends and wives of my team into the tomb to show them the sarcophagus. This follows a number of discourtesies shown by the Egyptian Public Works Department and its antiquity service. The level of interference is now intolerable and shows a total lack of respect for the late Lord Carnarvon and his extraordinary generosity and affection for this country over the last ten years. As a protest, myself and my collaborators refuse to continue our work in the tomb until such impossible restrictions have been removed. That's all I have to say. I've been asked to go and lecture in America. You like it there? I'll treat you like a king. <laughs> <laughs> you should see a doctor, Arthur. Too much sand in the lungs. That's the real curse of the pharaohs. I'll be fine once we're away from Egypt. I shall miss it dreadfully. I am sorry that it has come to this. I must ask you for the key to the tomb. The refusal to work is in contravention of the terms of the concession. My department will now take responsibility and overall control of the tomb and the excavation. You mean you're kicking me out? I warned you, Monsieur Carter. I've already spoken with the minister. He's in full agreement with me. The key, if you please. The soldiers were hardly necessary, you know. did what you believed to be right.
a call for you from Cairo. The situation in Egypt has changed. The nationalist campaign of violence has backfired. The government are concerned. The hotel trade is vital to them and they're worried about losing tourists. The co is keen to reopen the tomb. But he needs an international team to do it. And he's asked me to go back. Under his proposal, I see that I remain responsible for the costs of the excavation. Yes. And I am to renounce all claims on the contents of the tomb. Yes. Duplicate pieces that the Cairo Museum feel they can spare will, of course, be ceded to you. At the discretion of Monsieur Lecoe, I suppose. I will do everything in my power to make sure that you receive a fair selection. My husband would have wanted you to return to your work. Will Mr. Mace be returning to Egypt? I'm sorry, I thought you knew. Mace died recently. Oh dear. Oh, I'm so sorry. I expect the newspapers will say he is another victim of the curse of Tutankhamun. Arthur always laughed at the idea. There are times when I wonder. to lift it. We've taken two of the three coffin lids off, yet the whole thing still weighs a ton. Mummy must be made of lead. Here's your answer. The first two coffins were made of wood, covered in gold foil. The third coffin isn't wood. It's solid gold. And they said this might not be a royal tomb. <laughs> there is one thing that's bothering me. Look at Harry's photographs. The physiognomy of the second coffin is completely different from the other two. Mace always said these shrines were botched up. I think this one was made for someone else. I think they buried our friend in a hurry. And I think it's time we had a look, don't you? Ready? Tell me when you have it. Behind me, behind me, show behind me. Behind me. Now, 
شکل ملک بسیدت این شکل Tutankhamun was finally left alone in the silent valley. Pharaoh I reigned for just four years, leaving no heir. When a new dynasty began, Tutankhamun's name was removed from the monuments he had built. With his records erased, his memory was allowed to wither away. Was it worth it? I think so, yes. Oh, yeah. And did you find it? A bit, yes. A bit. During his lifetime, Howard Carter received no official honor in Britain or Egypt in recognition of his unique achievements. And when he died in March 1939, his funeral was poorly attended. Tutankhamun's tomb remains the most famous archaeological find of all time.